Running numbers on a development deal the right way could land you a project that could earn you millions of dollars in profits. Running them incorrectly and moving forward on a disastrous deal could be the last deal you ever do as a real estate investor. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of understanding the basics of development deals, estimating costs and profits for a development deal, calculating your return on investment, otherwise known as your ROI, analyzing risks associated with a development deal, and tips for minimizing risks and maximizing profits in a development deal. Hey, what's up? Darren Boros here. My mission is to create a thousand millionaires using real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Understanding the basics of a development deal is an essential part of making sure you get the most out of your investment. A development deal often involves purchasing raw land or land with existing structures and then improving it to increase its value and profitability. This could involve adding new buildings, renovating existing ones, or simply changing the use of that land. For example, getting a piece of farmland zoned for a new residential subdivision. To maximize profits while minimizing risk in a development deal, you need to have a thorough understanding of all the costs associated with the project, as well as any potential risks that may arise during construction. So let me show you how to run the numbers so that you can make informed decisions regarding your investments. When estimating costs for a project such as developing land or building new structures, it's important to consider all of the expenses you will incur, such as land acquisition costs, permits, labor, and materials. These are often referred to as your hard costs. It's also important to factor in any additional fees, such as consulting fees or development charges. These are called soft costs. You also need to consider the cost of financing a project, such as the bank fees and the cost of borrowing or using capital from other investors. Additionally, it's essential to have an accurate estimation of potential profits from the project, which can be determined by researching comparable sales and rental prices in the area. Once you've calculated all of your expenses and potential profits, you can use this information to calculate your return on investment. ROI, as it's known, is a measure of how much money you make from an investment relative to the amount of money you put into it. In my experience, a good ROI for a development deal should be at least 20% annually, which means $100 invested would return $20 in profit per year. By calculating your potential ROI, you are able to have a better understanding of what kind of returns could be expected from this project for you, but it could also give the ability to decide if you're interested in bringing in partners to a deal as well. If I had the same 20% profit on a deal and I have financial partners who are entitled to half of that, my ROI goes down to 10%. Now I need to find a deal that returns 40% ROI annually in order to hit my threshold with partners. We can't talk about profits without discussing the other side of the coin, which is risk. It's important to be aware of all the potential risks associated with any project. These risks could include construction delays, unexpected costs, or legal issues. And depending on your project, there's also a significant risk that you don't get an approval for what you're proposing to do. This should also be factored into your decision decision-making process when you're calculating your ROI. This is also why it's important to have a contingency plan and multiple exit options should things change. Here are three tips for minimizing risk and maximizing profit in a development deal. First, it's important to research your investing area before moving forward to ensure that there is a need and a want from the municipality for a potential development. This will expedite your approval time and could reduce your costs significantly. It's always a good idea to approach the municipality early on and get a feel for what they need in the area for future development, as opposed to the other way around. Second, in order to minimize risk when you're getting started, it's best to pick up a project that may have the necessary approvals already in hand. For instance, buying a project from another investor that already has a building permit and taking it through the building process. Once you understand that, you can pick up a project one stage earlier, such as taking it through site plan approval. Keep moving back in the process as you feel more comfortable. I wouldn't recommend starting with a raw piece of land and trying to build a subdivision as your first development project. This is a recipe for disaster and could cause significant losses for you financially. Third, make sure you are educating yourself about how to take on a development project. Most projects are not for the faint of heart. Alternatively, if you don't want to get educated, partner with someone who has completed a similar project as a way to mitigate these risks. It's better to own a smaller portion of a project and have more certainty that it will be profitable than going at it alone and increasing your risk of it being a flop. On that note, if you're looking to learn more about developing real estate, I have a new development workshop Workshop where I teach you how to take on your first or your next development deal. It's a full day workshop that will show you the step-by-step -step guide to follow for taking on a project from conception to completion. It's only $95 if you use the promo code YouTube100 for a limited time. Sign up using the link in the description below. Understanding the basics of development deals, their costs and profits, and the associated risks can be the difference of whether you're
your project sets you up for the rest of your life or you pay for it for the rest of your life. If you have questions about how to run numbers on a development deal, leave those in the comments section below. If you'd like a copy of my free ebook, I'll leave a link for it in the description or you can check it out at my website, darrenboros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.